I compiled all my hardcore videos from the past year into one movie, so enjoy. Remember the days where you would sit at your Nintendo playing Mario for hours on end? Well, with the new Super Mario Bros movie releasing soon, I was left wondering, what if I build this in Minecraft? But there's a slight problem. I have nothing. So I punched a tree and beat the Ender Dragon. Then I grabbed an elytra and built an Enderman farm. It's been eight hours. All right, now I need mending for all my gear, so... <laughs> nice. Now that I'm all set, uh, where should I build this? You see, the reason I want to build this in the end is because there is endless space. But this island is kind of in the way. So, like any normal person would do, I'm gonna build a TNT flying machine. So, let's get to gathering the TNT duping flying machine materials. Alright, now let's just go ahead and speed run this machine. Alright, nice. Now, when I set it off, it should go all the way down there, and then come back, and then just repeat that a lot of times. So, let's... hold on. Activate it. Well, uh, it half worked. I should be able to fix it when it comes back, though. Alright, now it seems to be working. So, let's sit here, and hopefully it shouldn't take too long for the island to be destroyed. It's been 16 hours. Better yet, the island isn't even completely destroyed. I've got to build the machine lower down so the TNT can reach this section. But these obsidian pillars are in the way so I can't build one of these machines. So let's mine them up. <laughs> Just kidding. Since there's around 40,000 obsidian in this area and it takes two and a half seconds to mine each obsidian block, it would take me 28 hours of sitting at my computer mining obsidian. So, I've downloaded a mod called Baritone which gets an AI to mine it for me. Alright, <laughs> well, let's get to mining. There's five of the ten pillars I need to mine, so if you do the math, I'm halfway there. Oh, and no need to worry, I'm throwing out all the obsidian I get from this. Okay, well, let's get back to work. Well, technically, it's not me working, but... Okay, now with the power of editing, and there we go. Alright, before I finish blowing up this island, I've got to remove these floating bits of bedrock, so... Alright, now let's finish blowing up the end. Right, and after almost 70 hours, the end is now finally destroyed. Wait, I need to kill the dragon 19 more times to generate 20 of these end gateways. So yeah, I'm gonna need some end crystals. Like a lot of end crystals. Now, let's respawn the ender dragon. Wait, no, no! God damn it! I completely forgot that respawning the ender dragon regenerates these pillars. Well, I'll worry about these pillars after I kill the ender dragon 19 times. There's the first dragon down, the second, and the 19th ender dragon finally defeated. Now, I've got to do something about these pillars again, so... Well, look on the bright side, this is where the fun starts. Oh, that was a close one. I should probably get some totems. Well, if you haven't guessed already, it's raid time. total of that raid, I've managed to get five totems. Well, technically six, but, um... Alright, now in place of the end, I'm gonna be recreating the Mushroom Kingdom from the new Super Mario Bros. movie. But since the movie's not out yet, I've only got the trailer to work with. So, here's three screenshots I'm gonna be using for this build. As you've probably guessed already, the first step to this massive project is to build up the island, which is gonna require some stone, like, a lot of stone. This town ain't big enough for the two of us! Alright, now let's start building up the island. Wait, I still have nowhere near enough stone. I think I may have an idea. Alright, now if I sit at this stone generator for a while, I should have plenty of stone. Wait, why is this so slow? Oh, I need a beacon. God damn it. Hey, first try. No, 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 don't look down there. Oh, nice, there we go. Now that I've got the three wither heads, I just need four soul sand. All right, now let's summon the wither. Okay, that was surprisingly easy. All right, now let's craft the beacon. God damn it, I need 164 blocks for this beacon, and this is not gonna cut it. So... Alright, and after about an hour, I've got all the blocks I need. I've now just got to build the bacon. <laughs> what? 
Beacon. Alright, there we go. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, now I just need some andesite for the texture. Okay, this should be enough materials for the bottom half of this island. Disclaimer, it was nowhere near enough. So, let's get to building. Alright, and after five shulker boxes of materials, this is all I've managed to get done. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. Yeah, I'm gonna need a lot more. Alright, and one day later, I've got hopefully all the stone, cobblestone, and andesite I'll need. So, let's continue building. Okay, now that the bottom half of the island is complete, it's time for, you guessed it, the top part. Which is gonna require four blocks. So, terracotta, green wool, and 17,200 moss. Alright, there we go, that actually didn't take too long. I probably shouldn't speak too soon though, because this might not work. Well, let's hope for the best. Uh, well, about that, how am I supposed to figure out where I messed up? Oh wait, no, I got it. God damn it! Maybe if I do this? Nope. <laughs> okay, take five. Yeah, looks like it's working. Wait, this is producing all the other moss stuff, but not actual moss blocks. God <laughs> Well, let's build an actual moss block farm now. Right, now let's test it out. Please work. Yes, I think it's actually working. Yes, oh my god. If you can't tell in my voice, I'm very tired, so I'm gonna go to sleep and hopefully when I wake up, I'll have plenty of moss. Right, and after three days of collecting materials, it's time to continue building. Right, I'm now like 30% of the way done. Okay, now this area was looking kind of flat, so I decided to add some nice looking rocks to it. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Okay, on to stage two, which is recreating Princess Bubblegum's castle. But there's a slight issue, even after the last episode, I still don't know how to build. So... Hey, call me big man, what do you want? You said that last time. I need you to help me build again. Are you gonna pay me this time? Screen time? Alright, this is the castle that we, uh, Levi designed, but there's a slight issue. It requires a lot of materials. Materials which I don't have yet. So, boom, there's all the white terracotta. Now I just need 8,000 iron to make 2,000 iron trapdoors. Alright, there's the iron farm, now I just gotta get three villagers into each of these cages. And what do you know, this farm's conveniently placed next to a villager breeding center. Alright, there we go. Totally didn't take me almost an hour. Now I just gotta bring a zombie in each of these pits. There we go. Okay, and after quickly building up the nether side, the farm was complete. Alright, let's sit here overnight, and hopefully by the time I've awoken, I'll have plenty of iron. Okay, it's been... I wasn't counting. It's been a while, and I've got plenty of iron trapdoors. Alright, now the rest of the materials are pretty simple, except for one, which I'll worry about later. So, let's quickly gather them. Quickly for you, but a few hours for me. Boom, there's all the materials, except for the unknown item, which is 3,000 mangrove planks. And as you know, mangrove logs are not easy to obtain, so I can either spend 3 hours mining it manually, or I can spend 8 hours building a farm for it. <sighs> do you think I'm insane? Because that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, you've seen me get many materials many times, so let's skip through 2 hours of work and get to building. Okay, this is the farm. Don't ask me how it works. Alright, let's test it out. Oh my god, yes! It's actually working! Oh, I'm out of saplings. So, I spent an additional four hours building a tropical farm. <laughs> I'm just kidding, this took me like two minutes. Alright, to activate this, I need a lot of bone meal. Alright, nice, there we go. Now we can AFK the tree farm for a while. Okay, I've got all the materials, so let's get straight to building. And with the final block, this castle is complete. Yeah, this is looking sick. Now, in the trailer, you can see there's a bunch of mushrooms scattered around, so I'm gonna recreate them. But to do that, I'm gonna need almost three shulker boxes of mushroom stems. <sighs> 
So, let's slap some silk touch on my axe, and I'll look for a mushroom fields biome. Oh, sick, there we go. Now, I should be able to... Yeah, that dropped it, nice. Now, I just gotta commit deforestation with mushrooms. Alright, after clearing two mushroom islands of stems and breaking my axe, I've got all the mushroom stems I need. Next on the list is 8,000 terracotta, which is split into red, orange, light blue, and white colors. So, I'm sorry, Badlands, but you gotta go. Alright, now I need red dye, white dye, and blue dye. Okay, there's all the terracotta gathered. Oh, and while I was doing that, Levi made this song for no apparent reason. Now, to finish off the materials, I just need more quartz. And I've now got all the quartz. Okay, these are some of the mushrooms that I designed. What? Now I just gotta copy paste them onto this entire island. If only it was that easy. Alright, as you can see, I've got about 40% left, so why don't we do a sick transition? That totally didn't take me three hours. Now, there isn't much room on this island, and there's still a few things I want to build, so I'm gonna make some floating islands around this place. But, as you've probably guessed already, it requires a lot of materials. <laughs> Okay, I've now got all the materials, so let's get to work on this island. Now, in the trailer, you can see Mario comes out of this green pipe, so I'm gonna try and replicate that. Oh, that's looking sick. I wonder where this leads. But it is missing something, so 3, 2, 1, boom! Yeah, this place is really coming together. But it's not done yet, because we got some more islands to build, so... Now, what will Yes Lucid build on this island? Is it A, Mario, B, a giant mushroom, C, a forest, or D, all of the above? What a phone of friends! Oh wait, I have no friends. Trick question, it's none of them. I'm gonna build these mushroom village houses that you see in this shot. So, without further ado... But this water kind of looks weird, so I think I may have an idea. Oh yeah, now it's like they're falling into clouds, I like that. Now at the back you can see there's a lot of empty space, so why don't we fill it with, you guessed it, another island. Which will require, you know what I'm about to say, so boom, there we go. Alright, now let's get to building this island. Alright, with this island complete, we are still not done. I've got a bunch of clouds and floating rocks to build, which will really bring this place together. So, let's get to work on designing these. Oh. Alright, this is one of the rocks that I designed, all on my own, without anyone else's help. Okay, that was a lie. So, let's go ahead and build a crap ton more of these. Oh yeah, these rocks really brought this place together. But there's still something missing. Yep, it's clouds. Which will require... Yep, a lot of glass. And as you should know by now, glass requires sand, so... Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Alright, let's continue. Okay, now I've got to turn this sand into glass. Yeah, this furnace is way too slow. You know what they say, expect problems and eat them for breakfast. Okay, literally no one says that. That's besides the point. The point is, I'm gonna build an auto smelter to smelt all of this sand. So... Whew, yeah, this is, this is really good. Alright, here's all the glass, now I've got to combine it with some white dye. Alright, now I've got all the glass I need, so it's time to build up these clouds. Alright, and wow, that looks incredible. Well, on that note, we're done. Picture yourself with a billion dollars living on the street. Well, that's me, in Minecraft at least. With no place to call home. But today that's gonna change. I'm gonna build a city underwater in the nether. Well, this project's gonna be split into four phases, so let's begin with... The first step of this massive project was to surround an entire island in glass because where else am I going to put a million blocks of water? Oh, I'm already out of glass. Which left me with two options. I can either mine it manually or I can farm it.
<laughs> so, as any sane person would do, I spend the next three hours of my life building a gravity block duplicator. Okay, now let's grab all of this sand, put it in my super smelter. Now, you may be asking yourself, but Lucid, how are you going to fuel all the furnaces? Introducing the Wither Skeleton Farm 101. I totally didn't spend another three hours building this off camera. Now, if I smack up these Wither Skeletons for a little bit, I should have plenty of coal. Nice. Right, and yeah, I'm getting loads of glass. Right, as you probably guessed, let's continue. Oh, I'm already out of glass. According to my calculator, I'm gonna need 44,745 glass. That's 13 double chests. Now, I wanna extend this glass wall all the way up to the... Really? Yeah, no, I give up. As I was saying, all this netherrack is kind of in the way, so... Well, that's just great. Alright, and now the glass barrier is complete. Now I want to build an entrance up to the bedrock roof because I imagine I'll be doing lots of stuff up there in the future. Now, to actually break the bedrock, I'm gonna need some of this. Now, let's first of all head up on the nether roof and do something like this. Now, let's go ahead and spam this. It will hopefully lag out the game a bit so I can come down here, break that, place that, and... Hold on, just give it a sec. That didn't work. Let's first spam this, and uh, I don't think this is supposed to happen. Time for take three, let's spam this a bit, then hop down under here, break this, place that, and... Take four, let's spam this, break this, hop down under here, break that, place... Take five, let's spam this, run over here, break that, break this, place that. And it worked, first try. Now I just gotta repeat this inside this entire circle. Alright, and after about two hours, we are done with the first layer. Yeah, <laughs> there's five layers. Okay, and many hours later, this bedrock is finally clear. But as you can see, that's not Atlantis, nor is it a glass cage. So, I'm gonna have to get digging. And there we go, now I can just head straight through here onto the roof. Oh, and don't worry, I'll make it all look cool in the next phase. Speaking of phases, let's move on to... As you probably figured by now, I'm gonna be building Atlantis, so here's the plan, I just gotta build up all of these buildings. A few sleepless nights later, and there we go. Yes, it's blurred out, so to see it, I guess you're just gonna have to wait till I build it in the actual world. Oh yeah, trust me, it looks sick. Okay, I'm back on the main world, so let's see what I need to collect. Oh, that might be an issue. See, I need roughly 11,500 blocks of quartz, which totals to just over 6,500 shulker boxes. And as you may know, one quartz block requires four quartz. Yeah, I'm gonna need over 26,500 shulker boxes of quartz, so let's get to work. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. You see, at this rate, it'll take me 13 hours to mine all the quartz. So, introducing void trading. Well, void trading, but without the void. Don't worry, you'll see. So, if I do something like this... And I just gotta get two villagers here. So, let's head to a village, build a portal, connect it to the roof, and snag a couple villagers. Right, and there we go. The way it works is I first set my render distance to two, then trade with the villager once it's out of my render distance, which will cause it to not lock its trades. Wait, I need emeralds. So I spent the next two hours getting materials for a stacking raid farm. Then I spent the next two hours building the stacking raid farm. Then I spent the next hour putting villagers in the stacking raid farm. Then I AFK'd here. For three hours. Whoa, this is a lot of them. Now I can start trading with these villagers for some quartz. Well, I've now got all the quartz I need. Which means it's now time to build Atlantis, right? Wrong. You see, I need over 6,000 prismarine for this build. So, as you probably guessed, I'm gonna build a guardian farm. And would you look at that, all the materials are conveniently placed in these two shulker boxes. I mean, it's not like I spent the past hour getting them. <laughs> Well, let's first find an ocean monument to build the farm. Nice, now let's get to work. Alright, and the guardian farm should be complete. Oh my god, yeah, it's definitely working. I guess I'll just smack these guys until I've got enough prismarine. Alright, now let's see how much we've got. Oh yeah, that should be plenty. 
I take that back. Guess I got an AFK here for a while longer. Alright, I've now got all the prismarine except for some dark prismarine, which requires black dice. So, a couple hundred squid later, and I've got all the dark prismarine I need. Now, I'll just go through this list collecting everything I require. Starting with 582 end rods. Great, so 1, 2, 3, and 600. It's been two hours. Next on the list is Deep Slate, so I think I have a better idea. Alright, there we go. Now I just need some basalt and two with the skulls. You'll see why. Now with the power of editing, I've got all the materials. So let's get to work. Wait, before I start building Atlantis, I've got to cover this entire floor in sand. I really did not expect this to take so long. Like, I got on at 6 and I've been placing sand from then all the way to now. It's 10pm. Now, I reckon it's about time we get to building. This first building was going to be the main centerpiece of the island, so I could construct all the other buildings around it. Now, I think it looks pretty cool, but you know what would look cooler? I punch more of these surrounding it. So, I got to work, adding lots of these buildings all around it. In front, behind, to the left, to the right, you name it, I built it. Yeah, this is coming together very nicely. But you know what would look even better? A bunch more of these surrounding it. So, with what I like to call magic... This way, do the editing cut. Boom, <laughs> that was a nice jump cut. Get it? Because, well... Jump. Next up, I want to build a bridge going around here that I can sort of fly under. Oh yeah, this this is turning out sick. Now I want to build a couple statues like here and here. So earlier when I mentioned I needed wither heads, well that was for this. Oh my god, bro! Oh, hell no. So now it's time to enter. Now, it would be time to add the water if we're in phase 4, but no, we're in phase 3, in which we'll be making this place look even spicier. Such as by building a giant shark fossil around about here, which requires some bone blocks. And... yeah, just bone blocks. Oh wait, no, I take that back, I need some dripstone. Now, if I place a few blocks here and there, I should have a T-Rex fossil. Sure, a land creature underwater doesn't make too much sense, but it's a block game. Now, I've got plenty of space to fill, so why not introduce some audience participation? In this space, will I build A, a giant shipwreck, B, giant seashells, C, coral, or D, none of the above? Trick question, it's all of them. But uh, to speed things up, I'm gonna speed run them. So, I'm gonna need some spruce, dark oak, <laughs> that's about it. So... Nice. Now, for the seashells, I just need some prismarine and quite a few diamonds, because that's just what I chose to build with. Don't know why I keep doing this to myself. And an hour later, I've got enough diamonds for one seashell. Yeah, I want to build like seven. So I got to work mining diamonds, mining diamonds, and guess what? Mining diamonds. Until I had enough diamonds to buy a golden yacht. Or build a couple seashells. Did I then proceed to spend five minutes building with what took me multiple hours to obtain? Yes. Does it look cool? Also yes. Are there are a million other ways to build it without diamond blocks? Also yes. Next I want to add a bunch of coral all over the place. So let's breed a couple sheep. Whoa, 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 hey, hey, hey. More than a couple I should say. And dye them a whole range of different colours. Like red, blue, yellow, purple, and pink. Now, if I give him a few haircuts, I should have plenty of wool nice. Now, let's just place it in a somewhat irregular fashion. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, I just gotta copy it around this entire area. Now, I wouldn't be lying to you if I told you that this took me four hours. Cause yeah, it took me four hours. It was worth it cause it looks sick. So it's about time to start flooding it. Now, you may be wondering how I'm going to flood the nether. Well, introducing Snapshot 21W03A, in which if I combine glow lichen with lava, it should make water, even in the nether. Yeah, I think you can see where this is going. So I spend the next three hours building a glow lichen farm. I'm kidding, this took me like two minutes. Now I'll turn it on, and yeah, it works nice. Right, I've now got all the glow lichen I need, so I'll just craft some buckets, and we're good to go. So let's switch over to the Snapshot. Yes, I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Wait, where did everything go? You see, after switching versions, the entire world was reset. So the only way around this is to rebuild everything. 
No, I'm kidding. I've installed a program called MCA Selector which allows me to copy chunks from my other world to this world. Let's just act like I know what I'm doing. All right, there we go. Now, hopefully if I combine lava with this glow like in Yes, it worked nice. Now I just gotta wait. Deep Slow wasn't a thing back in this update. Ah, that's a problem for future me. Now I just gotta create an entire platform around here, then cover it in water, then destroy the platform so the water floods the area. This is gonna take a while. so satisfying. And for the final block, there we go. That took, let's just say, a whole lot longer than I expected. It was worth it because it looks amazing. Well, not yet. First I gotta bring it back to 1.19, then turn shaders on. Oh my god, this looks incredible. There's just a couple minor details I have to add, such as seagrass and some deep sleep back over here. And there we go, we are finally complete. Yo, this is actually insane. Wait, you know it's not centered, right? As time went on, beacons became easier and easier to obtain. So why not build an entire beacon out of Minecraft's rarest and most illegal blocks? Starting with... Pink wool from a pink sheep. As the video goes on, the blocks will get harder and harder to obtain, even getting a block that has never been obtained in hardcore. Next is mycelium and deep slate emerald ore. Mycelium being very easy to get. But deep slate emerald ore, as you can see by this graph, is pretty difficult to find. Just gotta head to a mountain biome. Okay, I don't want to be here. Actually, I want one of these, but not from mining them. You see, the reason I'm killing the warden is because it'll drop one skull catalyst, which kinda makes it rare, right? Well, <laughs> that was easy. Okay, back to deep slate emerald ore. Damn, I really thought that was it. Oh my god! You've got to be kidding me. Ooh, deep slate coal, that's pretty rare too, I'll take that. Yes, oh my god, let's go! Now the next two blocks are found in the nether. They are the lodestone and netherite block. For the netherite, I gotta go back to the overworld. So let's grab some gunpowder to make TNT. You can probably guess what I'm about to do. Not that. Do the montage. I need 36 ancient debris, and from about 6 stacks of TNT, I have 12 ancient debris. <laughs> let's get back to work. There we go, I've now got 38 ancient debris. So let's cook it up, combine it with some gold, and craft a netherite block. Now for the lodestone, I could craft it manually, but I don't want to do that. Instead, they have a chance of spawning in a bastion chest, so I'm going to obtain it that way. This was a very, very bad idea. Oh my. Oh my god! Oh yes, finally! Totally didn't almost die like seven times. This beacon consists of 48 blocks, yet not all of them are illegal, so we're gonna have to get a bit creative and unique. Such as Minecraft's longest named block, Waxed Weathered Cut Copper Stairs. An ungrowable chorus flower, the old Minecraft launcher logo, and the first block ever placed in this world. Now here in the end section, I'm gonna add a dragon egg and a dragon head. Next is the most uncommon block in the overworld. But luckily for me, I know where to find it. From a woodland mansion. Yes, finally! It's been five hours. Finally, I just crafted it. Now, the next few blocks are pretty much fillers, so I'll speedrun them. Starting with the first block in Minecraft, Amethyst Cluster, Blue Magma, <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> Path block, Diamond Ore, Beacon, and Gilded Blackstone. There we go, all the fillers are out of the way, so now it's gonna get interesting. For example, did you know water and lava could float? That's right, with this pretty simple machine, really, it will stay floating in the air. So I just gotta build it here. Twice. Hmm, this isn't gonna work because whenever I place a block next to it, yeah, it flows. So I guess we'll have to stick with this for now. Oh my god, bro. Oh. Right here, I wanna add a floating end crystal. So let's snipe a ghast and make sure to make a sick edit out of it. And grab its tear, then combine it with an eye vendor and glass to make. Wait, that's wrong to make an end crystal. To make it float without obsidian, it's gonna require some really advanced exploiting mechanisms. That was easy. 
You've got to be kidding me. Now, since this is a beacon, it would make sense to have each of the beacon blocks on it. Like iron, gold, and an emerald block. Yo, this is really coming together. Before we move on, I'm going to tell you the real reason I'm doing this project. You see, recently Minecraft just hasn't felt the same. So as I sat there, I wondered, how could I truly have fun again? To answer that, let's quickly get through the easy block so I can get to obtaining the illegal blocks. Now, I think it'd be cool to add a block here and sort of surround it with painting. So how do I make these things? No, no, no. Wait, yes, nice. Now, let's get the two paintings I want. There we go, I got a bowl of salad and a... I don't know what that is. Now, apart from this dead head of a dragon, there isn't any life to this beacon. So if I find a tropical fish, name him Daniel. Don't you swim away from me. And using a feature that not many people know about, I'll make him a nice, cozy, and not compact at all home. No, Daniel! So if I find a tropical fish, name him Daniel. Don't you swim away from me. So I got another fish, named him Danny. Since there's a water block there, I wonder if I could add a coral block here without it dying. Yeah, I think it works. Oh, and I'll also add some sea pickles in this water. Why? Why not? As you can see here, there's space for three mob heads, but... I don't have three mob heads. To get them, a charged creeper needs to blow up the mob, which should then drop its head. But to get a charged creeper, I need a trident. Great. Okay, so I gotta find a trident round, which has a 6.25% chance of spawning. And there, they have an 11.5 chance of actually dropping their trident. In other words, extremely rare. Yes, finally. Now I gotta get the channeling enchantment on the trident. Just need to wait for it to thunder. Alright, now I'll charge up some creepers and collect their heads. There's a skeleton head, zombie head, and creeper head. Just before I move on to the illegal blocks, I'll add a ring of blazed terracotta around the top here. Which can only be obtained from villagers. Before you laugh at me, I know. Trust me, I know. Cue the montage. Ooh, there we go, I just gotta head into here and I've got a bunch of villagers lined up. Except I don't. You see, I need 20 villagers here, but I don't have 20 villagers. Now we're just gonna make a rail leading to the villager trading hall and take them one by one into their cells where they'll live for the rest of eternity. There's one, two, three, and 20 villagers in place. It's been four hours. Now I'll just trade with them until I get the right glazed terracotta color. That's not the right color. <laughs> you thought I was gonna kill him? No, I'm gonna get lava to do it for me. Now I'll just repeat this process until I've got all the glazed terracotta. Yes, there we go. I've now got all the glazed terracotta colors. Oh, Lucid, what's with all the villagers? The glazed terracotta. You know you can just smelt it, right? Just gotta place them all down. Okay, well it's time to enter... Now there are six illegal blocks I'm going to be obtaining, and as I move through them, they'll get progressively harder. The first block is Reinforced Deep Sleep, which is found in an ancient city and, you're right, can't be obtained in survival. But, if I head to a Deep Dark Experimental Snapshot, and move it with a piston, oh my god, I was like 70% sure that wouldn't work. Well, now I've got to push it all the way back to my base. This'll be fun. You thought I was going to do it all manually? <laughs> nah, I'm going to use flying machines. There we go, I just gotta stop it, and I'll just manually move it all the way down there. And there we go, there's reinforced deep slate done. Before we move on, I've hired some guy through unorthodox methods to fix my water and lava. No shot, it was that easy the whole time. Next block is the end portal frame, which requires us to head back in time, so with a little jump cut, we're in beta 1.9. As you can see, there are a couple changes. One, we both had a glow up, and two, we're not in hardcore anymore. Now to obtain it, we need to collect some gear, cause we kinda lost all of it. Now we gotta find a stronghold, and would you look at that? The developer Jeb has conveniently marked it for us. Yo, Lucy, check this out. What? Why are there just trunks that go down to the void? That's so weird. Nice, we're in the stronghold. Back in prison, you think I feel so bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found the portal room. Now I can actually use TNT to blow up these weirdly textured end portal frames. Why do they look like that? But uh, for TNT, we need gunpowder. Just don't let the creepers blow up, because we need their gunpowder. <laughs> Just whatever you do, don't let the creepers blow up. Now there might be a problem that our stuff is gone. No, no, you're lying, you're lying. Our stuff is not gone. Our stuff. I got an oak sapling. Oh my god, yes, I got the gunpowder. It's been like three hours. 
didn't think that one through. And there we go. We've got not end portals yet. I just got to put it in a chest and transfer it to the main world. And there we go. There's four end portal frames. So I'll place one with an eye and one without. Next is bedrock. And no, not the Minecraft version, the block. That was so unfunny, Lucy. So with a little transition, we're in 15W47C. Now to obtain bedrock, we need to first beat the ender dragon. So let's gear up. Alright, it's time to beat the dragon. And there we go, the dragon is defeated. Now to obtain the bedrock, I need five end crystals. Okay, so if I place them something like this, put on the last one, blow it up right after placing it. Yeah, work, let's go. I've obtained bedrock in survival Minecraft. Now I just gotta transfer it back to 1.19 and place it on the beacon. The next and second final block is the spawner, which I've already jumped ahead to beta 1.9. To obtain the spawner, I wanna find a stronghold, but first, we need gear. Alright, so the stronghold should be just down here. Yeah, nice. Now this stronghold's are central for one, the spawner which I can gain XP from and obtain later on. And two, bookshelves for an enchanting table. Whilst I grind these rats for XP, I'm gonna grab some bookshelves <laughs> and dupe a couple diamonds. Don't worry, I'm not taking any of this back to the main world. After gearing myself up, I then had to grind thousands of silverfish to get to level 30. Which was easy, cause they just keep infinitely spawning. Alright, now I'll just enchant my pickaxe to get silk touch. That's not silk touch. <laughs> and there goes all my levels. Okay, time for take two. Yes, wait, fortune and silk touch on the same pickaxe? Totally not cursed at all. Now can I mine this thing up? Yes, oh my god, I've obtained a monster spawner. Now as you probably guessed, let's transfer it to the main world and place it on the beacon. I guess my beacon's now a pig generator. Now onto the final block, which is the barrier. With thorough and complex research, I've found one singular method of obtaining it. First, we gotta head to 20W16A, gear up and find a bastion. Now, if I clear out one of these lava pools, there should be, yeah, a barrier block. I don't know how or why, but it's here. Now you may be asking, but Lucid, how are you gonna obtain this? Good question. I don't know. Basically, you wanna make a dispenser, then transfer that chunk into the one block at a time. Then you... Now he wants me to transfer it into some one block at a time update. I don't know. What? This is so weird. Why do I have two hands? Wait, so can I just... What the hell? Now, according to him, if I place a dispenser button and some slabs down, I should be able to activate it and... Oh my god, it actually worked! I've obtained a barrier block. Wait, but how do I bring this to the main world? So I had this dumb idea of chugging it in the air and having it land on my head because apparently you can do that in this update. <laughs> I'm wearing a barrier block, this is so dumb. Now, can I just transfer myself into the main world? Oh my god! Yes, I've got a barrier block on my head! So let's place it on the beacon, and there we go. Wait, I still need to light the beacon. There we go, we are done. Now sure, this beacon turned out amazing, but what was really amazing was experiencing the old feeling of Minecraft again, and truly having fun. Remember first playing Minecraft and taming your first pet dog? Well nowadays it just doesn't feel the same. So in an attempt to get that same feeling back, I'm gonna collect the coolest and most illegal mobs in all of Minecraft. Now the first mob is a literal giant. To get it I need to make a new world in the infinite dimension snapshot, gear up and enter dimension Z. What the hell? This is so weird. Now there should be... Yes, there's a giant. Just gotta build a decently sized nether portal to fit this guy and lure him through. There we go. To transfer him to the main world, I'm using a neat little program called MTA Select. Wait, but where do I put this guy? There we go, now we just gotta make a cage for him. Alright, well I just gotta summer take him all the way down there. Wait, I wonder if I could- Oh my god, wait, I've actually got a giant in a minecart. That's so weird. Alright, there we go, that's the first mob trap. Now as the video progresses, the mobs will get crazier and crazier, even getting some mobs that have never been obtained before. Alright, as you probably can't tell by this time lapse, the next mob I'm gonna be trapping is an upside down village runner chicken. To do so, I first gotta find a baby zombie village runner chicken, which has a 1 in 3200 chance of spawning, so you know what time it is. Alright, I've modified us all the regular mobs will fall down here whilst the chicken jockeys will go up this tube into a cage right next to me. Alright, now let's AFK here for a little while. Hopefully this shouldn't take too long. That took too long. Now I'll just shoot all the ones I don't need. Make a weakness potion and golden apple to cure him into a villager. Alright, well now I've just gotta take him all the way down there. And there we go. Now the next mob is a triple strider. Thing is, they don't exist anymore. So I gotta travel back in time to 20W17A and head to the nether. Right, now this... This is gonna take a while. 
Oh my god, wait. That's four striders. That's insane. Oh my god. Just need them to grow up and I'll bring them back to the main world. Wait, I need a place to put them. And there we go. Wait, I have an idea. So if I put a lead on the bottom one and hop on the top one. Oh my god. I'm actually flying. <laughs> oh, this is so weird. Alright, I just gotta bring him down safely and move on to the next mob, which is the illusion. Now, this thing has a... wait for it... 0% chance of spawning. So, after a bit of research, I found out I need to go to the infinite dimension snapshot. Thing is, I don't know what dimension they're found in. There's like two billion dimensions. No, 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 no... Wait, yes! That's the illusioner! Just gotta take them through this portal. Now we can transfer it and I forgot to build a cage for it again. Alright, there's the illusion of trap. Now with all these mobs in here, I'm gonna need something to protect them. Something like two iron golems with no AI. To get them, I'll go to that same snapshot and enter dimension missing. Now as you can see, these iron golems don't go through nether portals. So I'll create an end portal using the frames from last episode. And there we go. Now we can transfer them and they'll be protecting the mobs for the rest of eternity. Yeah, the golems died, so I replaced them with scarecrows. Now the next two mobs are an adult drowned and zombified piglin on a chicken. Starting with the drowned, I need to head to 18w16a and find a zombie spawner. Now by placing water here, the zombies will drown and have a 1 in 500 chance of being on a chicken. So now we wait. Yes, there we go. Okay, now for the zombie piglin jockey, I'll go to 20w11a and build something like this. Now I'll AFK up here and wait for a bunch of piglins to go through these nether portals. Now when zombified in the overworld, these guys have a small chance of turning into what I want. And yes, there we go. Just gotta transfer them and you know what time it is. And there we go. Now the next mobs are the stray and with the skeleton skeleton horse jockey. First I'll wait for lightning to strike and summon a skeleton horse. Now I'll activate it and grab some powdered snow. Now with this very complex and intricate contraption, the skeleton should turn into a stray. And sick, there we go. Now for the with the skeleton horse jockey, I'll go to 1.9 and head up here a little bit. Now I want to make a pretty big platform so lightning can strike it and summon a skeleton horse. Then they should go through these nether portals and have wither skeletons on top of them. So now we wait. Okay, let's enter the nether, and yes, there we go. Alright, now we just gotta build a cage for them, nice. Next is the blue axolotl, and they're illegal because they don't exist in the real world. But I'm not gonna get these guys the normal way, I'm gonna farm them. To do that, I'll go to when they were first released, and build something like this. Alright, so the axolotl should spawn here, and then chase after the drowned and go into a nether portal down there. Alright, well now I just gotta AFK up here for a little while. Okay, it's been a while, so let's see. Oh my god, yeah, there's a blue axolotl. Alright, now we can build a cage for him. There we go, there's the blood a lot of trapped. Now the next mob is the literal human. Hear me out. I'm first gonna go the one block at a time April Fool's update. Right now, I need to get to the end. Thing is, I have two hands and no inventory. Look on the bright side, I can pick up mobs and throw them. And fly with them. Now I wanna go the nether to make an end portal. So I gotta first find a ruined portal. Yes, there we go. Okay, so I just gotta punch some of this obsidian and put it in place. Alright, now I'll just light this thing and head into the nether. Okay, just gotta head to a nether fortress. Now, if I open these chests, they actually have end portal frames. So then I can just use 12 of these to make an end portal. Now, if I bring a chicken and skeleton into the end, I can actually fly while shooting the end crystals. Alright, now I'll just punch the ender dragon to death. Wait, I can ride it? Now, as you can see, these endermen are holding all kinds of random blocks, so there's a chance that one of them has... Yes, there's a player in. Now I can just pick this up and transfer it to 1.20. Now, with a little bit of magic, I've trapped a human. If I did you use your imagination a little? Now, I want to give this guy a netherite hose, so why not make a sick edit out of it? Wait, you're telling me you can't even put tools on armor stand? mob is a bunny that literally kills you. To get it, I gotta go to 14w27a, and these guys have a 1 in 1000 chance of spawning. That's gonna take forever! Oh my god, yes, it's a killer bunny! You just gotta transfer him to the main well. You've got to be kidding me! Yes, there we go, I found another killer bunny. So let's not die again and transfer it to 1.20. Now this guy needs a home to stay for the rest of his life. And there we go, there's the killer bunny captured. Alright, next I want to trap every boss in the game. Starting with the wither, I can actually use barrier blocks from last episode to keep him in place. So let's go and grab three wither skulls. 
Wait, I have a wither skeleton farm. Now we can build a cage for this guy. And then I can just summon him. There we go, that's the wither trapped. Alright, moving on. The next boss to trap is the water. So let's head to the deep dark and activate one of these bad boys. Now, because I'm pretty confident in my Minecraft skills, I'm sure I'll be fine. Actually, let's be a bit more careful and build a tunnel going over the museum. All right now, let's take the one through. Now, before I can bring it to its cage, I need to build its cage. To stop the one from killing the mobs, I'm gonna have to build some really advanced mechanisms. Alright, let's now take this guy into place. There we go, now he's trapped. Okay, now the final boss, as you probably guessed, is the Ender Dragon, and there's a bit of an issue, because I need to trap this thing in the overworld. In 1.20. I'll we'll start by going back to the one block at time world. And remember earlier how I rode the dragon? Yeah, well, I can ride it through the void into the overworld. Wait, that was meant to be a joke, it actually worked. So now I'll transfer to 15W47C and build a pillar with a boat on top. Now, hopefully, yes, the dragon's in a boat. Now I'll transfer it back. And I can actually use flying machines to push it in place. Oh, uh, I dropped the ender dragon. You know, that's not something you hear every day. To fix that, we'll make a nice little bridge to move him across. Actually, before I move the dragon in, I should probably build a cage for it. Alright, there we go. Now I can bring the dragon into place. Okay, now I just gotta drop it down there. And there we go, that's the dragon trap. Yo, tell me this doesn't look sick. All three bosses trapped in the overworld. Now, to truly get that feeling of taming a dog for the first time, I'm not gonna be limited by the bounds of Java Edition. So I moved to Bedrock Edition. To get this bedrock mob, I have to look through lots and lots of zombies. Yo, are pink sheep even rare in bedrock? Ha, <laughs> bedrock even has baby dogs. Damn, this scenery looks so nice. Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for, a baby riding a zombie. Now, if I kill the adult zombie, the baby can ride lots of mobs like a... Horse. Now, I want lots of these special mobs, but it's gonna take way too long getting them manually. So I built a farm for them. Now, the special zombies should fall down here and survive, whilst the regular mobs should die. Keyword should. I haven't tested this out yet. So let's AFK here for just a little while. Okay, let's kill all the adult zombies. And use a couple chickens to transport them back. Now, since I can't transfer these guys to Java, I'm gonna trap them here. Alright, there we go. Actually, I need one of those cows. So let's just move these guys onto some new mobs and bring them into their pens. Alright, there's the baby zombie on a cow, pig, sheep, wolf, zombie, and horse. Nice, there we go. Now we'll transfer back to Java. Now, I want to get two incredibly illegal horses. First is a zombie horse. Now, hold your horses. It is possible to obtain with our commands. I think. So let's go to the infinite dimension snapshot and enter dimension Q3. Now I'll we'll go to this biome that's too long to say and build a pretty large grass platform. Now if I sit here for a bit, the zombie horses should spawn. Those aren't zombie horses. Still no zombie horses. It's been two hours. Spawn on top of grass blocks with adequate light levels. Wait, what does adequate even mean? Should do the trick. Oh yes, there's a zombie horse. And now there's a floating zombie horse. Now let's go ahead and transfer it to the main world. Alright, now let's build a cage for it. Now we'll bring him in, and that's a zombie horse trapped. The other and even more illegal horse is the god horse. And no, the name's not an exaggeration. This thing can run 126 blocks a second, jump 34 blocks high, and has 200 health. To find it, I'll go the Minecraft 3D shareware update, and this looks pretty weird. First of all, there are these barrels that have unusual items. And the mobs have 2D textures for some reason. But the coolest part, for example, if I type more DACA, I get overpowered gear. Like, I even got a multi-shot 12 crossbow. So now if I actually type this, I should... Wait, 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 that's the wrong command. Okay, if I type this command, there should... Yes, there's a god horse. Damn, this guy's so far. So now we can just transfer him to the main world and build a pretty fitting cage for him. <laughs> I'm kidding, that's retextured Blackstone. Hey, you should name this guy Mayo, because he mayo maze. Now, for the final phase, I want to trap the coolest mobs in all of Minecraft. To achieve this, we'll head back to the one block at a time update. Now, I can actually throw certain blocks on top of mobs. For example, I can throw a barrel onto a villager. But to even make a barrel, I need to look for a spruce village. How does Steve measure his shoe size in square feet? <laughs> I think the chicken died. <gasps> That's a village! 
That's that's a village. Okay, and yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So if I place it in here and surround it in these blocks, they should turn into barrels. Nice. So now I'll just chuck it on a villager's head. Now to get this next mob, I need to first find a woodland mansion. So with the help of my best friend's seed map, it should be just about here. Nice. Right now, I want an evoker, so it's probably not a good idea to go in here unprepared. <laughs> Right, I can actually throw a carved pumpkin on this guy's head. Like, that just looks so dark. Okay, so now let's just transfer him and move on to the next mob. Right, as you may have noticed earlier, I can actually stack mobs on top of each other. For example, I can stack a creeper on a spider. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So what better way to get that feeling of taming a dog for the first time than to stack 1,000 dogs on top of each other? How, you may ask? Well, introducing the breeding chamber. Now, I need lots of cooked meat, so... Now, I know it's a bit unorthodox, but as a wise man once said, if it works, it works. Now let's just keep reading these walls for a very, very, very long time. I never want to do this again. All right now, let's stack these guys on top of each other. Yeah, that's so cool, so let's just transfer it back. Alright, before I move on to this final mob, I want to build a cage for these three guys. Boom, okay, now just bring him into place. Alright, and there we go, there's the wolf stack, pumpkin evoker, and barrel villager trap. Wait, I wonder what this guy trait. Now, moving on to the final stage, I want to make the rarest mob in all of Minecraft. So, introducing my master plan. The first step is to make a baby villager. Now, if I actually zombify him just like that, he can actually pick up armor. So now, I'll transfer this guy back in time to the one block update. Now, I gotta look for a specific colored panda. So this may take a while. This is taking a while. Wait, is that? Wait, wait, wait. Yes, that's a brown panda. So now we just gotta bring it all the way back to the zombie villager. Right, now I should be able to just do this. Yeah, nice. Okay, well, let's transfer this bad boy back to 1.20. And for the final time... And there we go, the final mob is trapped. So with that, we are finally complete. Up to this point, I still haven't got that same old feeling back. So maybe some things are just meant to stay as memories. And nothing more.